So I ran into yet another bug with Next.js's server actions. I know it's an alpha feature, so like I'm not going to complain too hard about it. But I wanted to kind of make a video to explain how do you debug things? Like what is a good technique to debug uh, dependency issues? This is a technique that uh, you should actually really learn because it's really great to help figure out where exactly did issues start happening in your code base. All right, so let me walk you through the issue that I was running into. So we have this page here, and when you click on submit, that invokes a server action, which waits for a second, and then it revalidates the path, which waits for another second, and then shows a new math.random value here, right? So after two seconds, you'll see this thing update, right? You, you might say, okay, well, that's, that looks like it's working like it's supposed to. Well, I have a loading.tsx file here, right? So as the page is loading or being revalidated, I would expect this loader to display, right? So if I were to do a hard refresh on this page, notice that it does say loading. But after you submit the form, it just, it just doesn't do anything. It just sits there, waits, and then all of a sudden it'll refresh your page. So how does this work? I have a page here where we have a component that does a timeout of one second, okay? And then over here, we have a math.random. So every time this page gets revalidated, it's going to generate a new number and print that out. And then we have a form that does a server action that calls do stuff. Okay, so up here is our server action. Notice that we have the use server keyword to kind of designate that this is a server action. It waits for a second, and then it just revalidates the path that we're on. So again, like what's the issue? The issue is that after you do the revalidate path, I would expect the loading to show up. And you might say, well, why do you expect that to happen? And I will go to a Fireship video where he actually shows this exact behavior working, right? He has a revalidate path happening. And you'll see in his video, after he submits the form, it shows his loading page. Okay, so he goes over here, he makes a loading page, and then he clicks it, and you see the loader pop up. So at some point in time, like, Next.js's server actions and the loader seem to work exactly how I think they would. But all of a sudden, this doesn't work. So what is the debugging technique that I want to share with you today? That's kind of the main goal of this video. It's not really complaining about Next and its bugs. It's more of like showing how do you, how do you pinpoint like where these issues happened. So I'm going to open up the package JSON, and I want to show you the technique I'm talking about. Basically, you want to do a binary search, right? There's also git bisect that I might talk about in a bit. But you want a binary search and try to figure out at what point did this feature stop working. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Next.js. This is something I've done in my like normal workflow a lot when we're doing dependency updates and all of a sudden something breaks, you got to go back in time and figure out, okay, like where did this stuff actually break? Um, so if you go to the actual repo and go to the tags, you'll notice that 13.4.0 on May 4th is like the first time where the server actions became alpha and the app directory was I think in production. So I'm going to downgrade this to zero. So we know that at this point, we don't know what this is, but we know at 13.4.5, something's bad. There's a bug. So what I'm going to do is after I change this to 13.4.0, I'm going to redo an npm install, and then I'm going to go ahead and just rerun next. Okay, so now we have downgraded next to the first available patch version, 13.4.0. And I want to check, does this thing actually work with the loader now? So I'm going to click on submit. So let's just go ahead and refresh the page so we get a brand new page, and I'll click on submit. And notice that it actually does show the loader. So when the page is revalidating, the loader shows up, which is what I would expect to happen when the page has to like recompute some data. Okay, so assuming that this is a real bug and not a feature or a change of the behavior, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is good. Okay, so now this is where like the binary search technique comes into play. Let's like luckily we don't have that many versions in between this. But what you do is you basically just half this. So take an estimate in between. So I'll say 13.3. And we want to figure out what, is this version good or is this version bad? So let's just go ahead and downgrade this. Or we're going to upgrade this to dot .3. I'm going to go ahead and just stop it. I'm going to reinstall and run it. All right, click on submit. And again, the quote unquote bug is, is present again. So we think that with this version, there's a bug. I'm just going to go ahead and put bad here. Okay, so again, we know that this is the lower bounds of good. This is the upper bounds of bad. So do the binary search again and try to figure out in between a number. So you could pick one, you could, could pick two. I'm just going to go ahead and pick um, 4.2. I'll go back over here and just do the same process. Okay, reinstall, reload. 
it's a very tedious process, but sometimes when you update a bunch of dependencies, like you got to do this to figure out what happened and where stuff's starting to break. So it looks like this still has the bug. Whatever version I'm on, I think a 0.3, still has the bug that I'm talking about. So we're going to go ahead and just say this is bad. And now luckily we're on the very last possible version. So we got to figure out is 13.4.1 good or bad. So let's just go ahead and change this to a 1. Click Submit. And notice that the loader actually pops up again. So what this kind of tells me is that somewhere between this version, which is good, and this version, which is quote unquote bad, they change something or they introduce a bug that messes up the loaders. Okay, so the main takeaway of this video is that whole binary search technique because sometimes you'll do an NPM update and you may update multiple versions. You might be like up three, four different minor versions and something breaks. So what you need to do is just start downgrading and you can arbitrarily pick downgrades until like you find the solution. But doing this binary search is like a guaranteed way to do the least amount of work to find what version the stuff start working. Now there's also something called git bisect that you can do, which I might not even cover in this video. But instead of basically doing like the package lock version downgrades and upgrades, you specify a git commit that's good, you specify a git commit that's bad, and you can kind of start doing the same process, right? Where git is going to actually check out a version in between your good and bad. And it's going to ask you, is this good or bad? And then you basically say it's good or it's bad. And it does the binary search for you. So git bisect, really awesome thing to look into. But yeah, maybe I'll save that for another video. So then if you actually look between versions one and two, there's a bunch of canaries that happen in between all this. So we could potentially just pick one at random. Okay, so now we're going to kind of do that same technique. I'm going to do a canary two here, go back. So that definitely has a bug. Let's go to canary.0 and see if this one has the issue. All right, this one actually works fine. So, so now we got to check Canary 1 and see if the issue is introduced in that one. Okay, so yeah, this is where the issue is introduced, Canary 1. All right, so now that we know that the bug is in Canary 1, what the next steps you could potentially do is look at the diff between Canary 1 and Canary 0. So if you actually go here to Canary 1 and you click do a compare to 4.2 Canary 0, That'll tell you all the differences between those two tags, right? And so it looks like there's only three commits. So one of these commits probably has some changes that introduce this change or this bug. But if you actually have like Next.js clone locally, what you could do is probably just like run it and do the development on Next.js. I'm assuming they have some type of like example project that's in their Next.js project. Or you could just clone it and do an NPM link. And I could have my example project just link to the locally running um, project that's on my directory. It's easier said than done. I did try cloning it and getting it all set up and it just wasn't working. So I don't want to waste too much time on this. But I would say that one of these three changes, um, if we kind of look through here, one of these three changes causes this issue to happen. Um, now it could be any of these, like you have all these NPM updates that are happening. All these dependencies are being updated. So some of these could have a bug that causes the loader to no longer work. We also have this commit where there's some changes with like file systems being added and async being added here, which could potentially be causing this issue as well. Um, what you could potentially do is you can go to your local package uh, JSON file and find your next directory. And you could just do a full project find. So like find in folder go ahead and type in that keyword and see what comes back. So we got stuff coming in back in the dist. ESM build, webpack, loaders. Um, here's a map file. Now, I don't know which one is going to be loaded in. Probably the ESM one, I would think. But one thing you could try doing is you could like revert this code to be what it used to be. So that would mean like getting rid of, let's say we can actually like go and get like the previous version of this file. So I'm going to go ahead and open up in a new tab. I did clone Next.js, so let's go ahead and get Next.js over here. And then I'm going to say git checkout, hit that commit. Okay, and then I'm going to find that path, I believe is this one. And I can just go ahead and do a fuzzy search for that file. Okay, so that's the next source of build webpack loaders. So what you could potentially do 
is the previous commit didn't have the async stuff in it. So you can see here, like all the async stuff is stripped out. We could potentially just copy this whole file, paste it inside of a project, restart next and see what happens. No promises. I mean, I'm doing this stuff on the fly, so I don't know if it's going to actually work. But we're basically downgrading this file to see if maybe reverting those changes where like the file system was added and async was added will potentially fix our issue. Let's just do, do a restart here. Go ahead and click submit. Okay, so that doesn't seem to fix it. Again, I don't know if I'm doing this right. There might be other stuff that you have to do behind the scenes to like compile next. But like I said, it's either this commit or it's this other one with this transition stuff where we could potentially also try to find this component. Um, let's just do a fuzzy search here. I'm going to grab this entire thing, and I'm going to go over to my app router here. Let's just try overriding this. I, I mean, this is probably going to break everything, let's be honest. You can't just take code and expect it to fix anything. Let's uh, restart next, just in case. Yeah, so I mean, at this point, I'm not going to be able to figure this out. Um, I would say... If you can get Next.js running locally, which for some reason, when I do an npm install on this project, it just breaks. Maybe they're not using npm. They're probably using like Turbo Repo, which I'd have to go and probably install. Do they have a contributing guide? Contributing MD is typically where you go and look to see like how you can get this stuff working, developing. To develop locally, clone it, check out, enable pnpm. So, I mean, there's like a lot of extra steps to get set up to get this, like to be able to actually develop on Next.js. Um, the stuff I was doing where I was like basically overriding node modules directly, it's it's not always fruitful because sometimes when they do a build on their next disk directory, like there's a bunch of other files that you have to go through and find the proper one. Like I was updating ESM, but they may not even, but I might need to actually update like a different, different thing. Um, like for example, here there's an app router and obviously just copying and pasting code is just, it's not going to work half the time. But at the very least, I hope what you guys learned from this video is how to do kind of like a binary search to figure out what versions of dependencies does stuff start breaking to help you pinpoint where you need to get downgrade things or maybe create issues with other stuff. And as you can tell, this stuff is not very straightforward, right? And unless you're actually familiar with like contributing on the third party library, it's not easy to dive into the code base like without spending, you know, a couple of hours trying to figure out how to run their stuff, how to get it working locally, stuff like that. But I hope you guys learned something interesting from watching this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And uh, like always, I have a Discord. You're welcome to join. If you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to hang out with some other developers, the link will be in the description of the video. Have a good day and happy coding.